Hi, I'm Kate Noble. I'm here at Shine Yoga in Cincinnati, and you are tuning into an everyday, everybody basics class. So this class is a lot of modified yoga postures, poses that we would do in a vinyasa class, uh, broken down and done slower and more mindfully with a little bit more focus. And the primary purpose of this practice is to work on the basic elements of yoga, which for me are first mindfulness, there's a sense of connection to breath and inner body awareness. And then in this practice, we're gonna be working on basic joint mobility and musculoskeletal balance throughout the body. So um, just some things to help you navigate everyday life a little easier, a little clearer, a little stronger, and maybe a little more joyfully. All right, so I wanna remind you that nothing should ever hurt and that you always wanna make sure that you're breathing well, not dizzy or lightheaded in any way. And that you can always stop and modify and just wait until you feel better. And if you finish your practice and you don't feel better, make sure that you follow up and keep yourself well. Okay, um, there's one posture we're gonna use a strap for. Um, you could use a belt or a tie. Um, and it is this pose. So you might even just be able to grab your pant leg. And then we are gonna do most of today's practice uh, standing at or near the wall and then you could also use a chair so if you don't have a wall that's near your practice viewing area you can grab um, just like a straight back chair really is is the best okay so we're going to start in mountain pose and you can just come standing with your feet right underneath your hips and then either Bring your hands together in front of your heart or simply let your arms relax at your sides. And as long as you're comfortable to do so, close your eyes and keep in mind that your eyes, your inner ears, as well as this kinesthetic sense throughout your whole body into your brain are your three elements of balance. So when we close our eyes, it is natural to feel a little off balance. And if it's uncomfortable, it's fine to keep your eyes open just let your gaze soften. And for another couple of moments, just standing here, feel into your body and think about the muscle balance that you feel in your body. Notice if you feel like you're gripping anywhere. Notice if there's any area that feels like it's collapsed. So that might mean hyperextended knees and it might also mean that you kind of collapse through your back or through your hips. And if you feel a sense of collapse, have a, see if you can create a little space in that area. So that might mean a little micro bend of the knees. It might mean a little gentle lift of the low belly. Let your shoulders relax. And feel the balance of your breath now. The breath flowing in and the breath blowing out. And remembering that's an essential part of our all right, as you're ready, open your eyes. And just for a few rounds, we're gonna do what I call breathing arms. So we're simply breathing with the arms, inhale them up and exhale, they release down. So you can imagine when you breathe in, your lungs expand, your arms also stretch out and up. And then as you breathe out, your lungs relax and your arms relax down with them. And let your head go up and down, breathing in, reaching and looking up and breathing out, relaxing and looking down. Let's do one more. Good, and then the next time your arms come down, keep them down and give your shoulders a good roll, rolling from the front to the back. Roll out your wrists and wiggle your fingers. It's okay if there's little kind of crunchy sounds. It's good popping all the little air bubbles out of your joints. Let your arms relax and just move your head in the way that feels best for you. Okay, now either coming to the wall or putting your hands on the back of a chair for balance support. We're gonna do heel lifts, lifting up and down. And you might notice a tendency to kind of pitch forward. See if you can go more up, up and down. I think it's gonna work better if I use the chair. So you can stay at the wall, I'm gonna use my chair. Lifting and lowering the heels. Keep your belly gently toned and your heart and your head elevated. All right, this time stay up there. Squeeze your leg muscles strong, squeeze your butt. Keep your belly gently toned, your heart lifted, your head lifted. 
Maybe take one hand off the chair or the wall. Maybe take the other hand off so you can hold your balance there. <laughs> you come down, just go right back up. Stay with your breath. Good. And then bring your hands back to the chair. Let your heels drop down. Hands are on the chair or the wall. Press your right heel back and down so you just get a nice, good calf Achilles stretch. And then breathe deep into your belly. Full breath in, complete breath out. Stretch your front leg now also straight. Think about making your hips straight across, so not diagonal, straight across. The back hip rolls slightly forward, the front hip draws back. And then just start to lean in towards the wall or the chair. If you're at the wall, you might put your head on the wall. We've got the chair here, we might put our elbows and lean in. Good, let's do the other side. Right foot is forward, the front knee bends, and you're pressing your back heel back and down. And then again, you just hold the posture in a place where it feels like a gentle stretch. Um, you know, a super powerful stretch is not better for your body. You, we really want to create the conditions for your muscles to relax and for your inner body to feel that sense of peace and calm as well. All right now, press your front leg straight, both hips press back. You want your hips square. Lift up through your chest and then hit, start to hinge. And again, your head might touch the wall. You might put your forearms on the wall. Here at the chair, if it feels good, you can let your head rest down on your arms. Connect to your breath. All right, and then stand up. Okay, so now either wall dog or chair dog. Chair dog, your hands are on the back of the chair and you stretch your hips back. Wall dog, your hands are on the wall, and stretch your hips back. And we're just looking to try to get the spine as long as we can. And then come on up standing tall. Okay, now, if you have wall space, you're gonna do a wall squat, wall sit. So you'll put your back against the wall, and you angle your feet straight forward. Try not to have them rotated out. And if you are not using the wall and you're using the chair, you're just gonna position yourself so that you're gonna practice sitting back and you might touch your hips just real lightly to the edge of the chair. In both cases, our primary focus is not the squat, but on tracking the knees so that your knees go straight over your ankles and toes. To make the wall sit harder, you walk your feet farther out and then everyone lift tall through your spine and chest and then you can squat and if you're using the chair, you can hinge and stand, hinge and stand. And here at the wall, we're gonna hold it for just a moment. If you wanna increase the challenge, keep your belly tight and stretch your arms overhead. Try not to let your back arch excessively. Find your breath. Good, everyone, stand tall. So we worked those quads a little bit. Now we're gonna stretch them. So, Take your hand, if you're at the wall, your hands will come to the wall, your right foot forward, your left foot is back. And this one actually is a little easier, I think, with the chair. You'll put it to your left side. So we're gonna have the right foot forward, the left foot back. Then everybody's gonna do this action. You're gonna bend your back knee and try to tuck your pelvis under. And then both knees bend. And then if you're in a position where you can Maybe take one arm overhead, you can practice that. Maybe you can take both arms overhead. Take a good deep breath there and stand up tall, nice. And then just switch sides. If you use the chair, turn around so you've got that good sense of support. Is that the right side? <laughs> Left foot is forward, right foot is back. Bend your back knee, tuck your pelvis. Keep Try to get your belly and your low back to lift up so try not to be in too much of an arch. Your belly strong and then bend both knees. And then maybe one arm and maybe the other arm. Hover hold, strengthening those quads. It's interesting in this posture, we're strengthening and stretching them. Take a good deep breath and then stand up tall. Great. Okay, stork pose is a balanced posture for which you can keep your hand on the chair or hands on the wall. I'm gonna do it free form just because it's a little easier for me to talk to you this way. 
Stand on your left leg and bend your right knee. And try to stabilize your pelvis where you're not, your belly's not arching forward. So you have a, you're not sucking it in, but there's a gentle tone. Hands can help support you if you need them. And then if it feels okay for you, you might stretch your arms up overhead. Again, try not to let your back arch. And if you wanna make this pose more challenging, you bend the knee more, hug your belly back, and try to press your inner thighs to touch without letting your back arch. It's way harder than it sounds. Take a good breath. Good, relax down. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Standing on your right foot, bend your left knee. Hands can be on the chair or on the wall. Find your balance. So you're finding physical balance, but you're also finding core balance by hugging the belly in, rooting the tailbone down. Maybe the legs come a little closer together. Maybe one arm is reaching up. Maybe both arms are reaching up. Connect to your breath. Make sure you're still breathing even as you're working to balance everything. Good, release and rest. Okay, wall dog or chair dog. So hands on the wall or the chair and then stretch out long. Okay, this one is another one of those ones that's trickier than it sounds. And um, again, you're gonna use the chair or the wall. I'm not gonna use them because I want you to see the motion that happens and the, it's hard for me to do that with these in the way. Okay, so your hands are on the chair or the wall. Your standing leg, I'm gonna bend. If you're facing me, it's your right knee. Mine is my left. You're gonna keep the standing knee a little bent and then you float your foot. Now your knee is gonna make a figure eight and your foot is gonna follow it. So I think of a kite and a tail, right? That your, your knee is the kite and it takes some time for the tail to follow it. So they're not moving, they're not moving at the same pace. The knee is moving and the foot is following. Now you can see I get a little more motion if I let my hips go, but I want you to try to keep your hips stable. Try to keep your hips stable. And you're probably feeling this in those hip sockets. Another breath or two, good. And then just shake them out, shake them out. Okay, other side. So you're standing on your left leg if you did the right leg before. The standing knee bends a little bit. Your hands are on the chair or the wall. And you're gonna lift up your foot. Now the knee's gonna lead and the foot's gonna follow. And initially, you can let your hips sway a little bit to get the motion. But then try to hold your hips steady so you're working just inside that hip socket. So you're working stability on the standing leg and mobility on the, stand, on the moving leg. A couple more so we're even. Okay, good. I'm gonna shake that out. Take a breath in, reach your arms up, look up, and stretch super wide. Good, and then roll your shoulders from the front to the back, and smooth your head however feels good for you. Okay, we're gonna take the left hand, or take your right hand to a wall, and you're gonna push the hand into the wall as you pull your heart away from the wall. So you're really just trying to create traction and length. And you might feel this stretch into your hand, wrist, upper arm, chest, shoulder. Hug your belly back and then turn away from your arm. Try to keep your shoulder back and down. So try not to, look, try not to let the shoulder roll up and forward. Shoulders back and down, ribs and belly back. Good, deep breath. Good. and then same thing other side keep your stretch the arm fully straight hug belly and heart back shoulder back and down and then turn away good deep breath there good and release okay this is called wall dolphin you can do this one on the edge of the chair. I'll show you that one in a moment as well. But your arms are gonna go like this. You interlace your fingers 
and you squeeze the elbows in. You want your shoulders and elbows to stay about the same distance. We don't want this. So you're squeezing your elbows in. Elbows squeeze in, hips walk back, and you stretch. And then if you're using the chair, you're just gonna snuggle your, bend your knees, snuggle your elbows in, stretch your hips back, and then as much as it feels good, you can stretch your legs straight and press your hips back. Really breathe into your ribs, not just the front, but the back ribs too. Okay, good, and then come standing up. All right, now this next one, I prefer standing. I'm gonna show you that one in a moment, but you can do it sitting too, and so we'll stretch the hips. You sit on the very edge of your chair, you lean your shoulders back, you cross an ankle over the knee, and then you sit tall. And then if you need more stretch from your hips, you can hinge forward. If you just lean your chest forward and your lower back bows back, it's gonna strain your lower back and it won't really release the hip. So it's important that you stay lifting up and leaning forward. Now at the wall, We'll cross the ankle over the knee, our hands support us on the wall, and just squat down. So this will help you build leg strength, balance, as well as release that hip. Couple good deep breaths there. Good, stand and switch. We're holding these for about 20 to 30 seconds, which is quite minimal. So as you go through this and there's postures that you really like, feel free to just to do them on their own and you can hold them for a couple minutes. Um, and you know, that will really help to release tension from your muscles and joints. Okay, good, come on up. Now I'll do this one with my chair at the wall and you'll see how you can do either or with the same demonstration. So you're gonna take, you're gonna face me and you're gonna turn your right foot outward and then you're gonna turn your back foot slightly inward. And your right hand will either be on the chair or the wall. And then you're gonna stretch both legs straight, but make sure you don't hyperextend your knees. So push into the ball of your foot and kind of cup the back of the knee. Lift your quad muscles up stretch your top arm up and then look back and look over your shoulder push your hips away from your front foot so you should feel your front inner thigh stretch now you can also start to lean in where the top arm goes up or the top arm might come to the wall and then if you want to go to classic triangle pose your bottom hand comes down to your shin or a block or a floor. Make sure that you're breathing well. Make sure you're not straining. It defeats the purpose. Okay, good, come up. And then you can turn around or move your chair if it's light like mine. And now it's gonna be your right foot is the one that's rotating outward and your back foot's rotating inward. Stretch your top arm up and out and look over your shoulder. And think about from your midlines, really stretching and opening up. And then pivot your hips back behind you a little bit more so they go, they go back in both ways. They go towards your left foot or towards your right foot, but also a little behind you. So you can kind of lean in a little bit. And then that bottom hand can come down to shin or floor or block if you like. Top arm might reach overhead and then you get a nice side body stretch there. Stay connected to your breath. Okay, good, come up and then repeat wall dog or wall dolphin or chair dog or chair dolphin. Okay, we're gonna sit for the, the ending of this practice and um, you can sit in a chair on the edge of your couch. You can also sit on the ground and I'll just talk you through that if that's what you're choosing to do. So come sit and if you're in a chair, you're gonna come to the very edge. And then we're gonna cross the 
uh, your right ankle over your left knee to start. And if you're on the ground, you can just sit cross-legged. Now, if your body allows, if you're sitting in the chair and your body allows for it, cross your top knee all the way over the bottom knee. Bring your left hand to your outer right knee. And if you're sitting, you're, just, you're doing the same thing. You're just in cross-legged position. And think about pulling, everybody think about pulling your right hip slightly forward and then twist the rest of your body to look over your right shoulder. So you want to think about your pelvis being stable and the twist happening through your waist, the right shoulder drawing back, and your head looking over your right shoulder. Take a good chest breath there. And release. Good. And then we'll just switch sides. So now left ankle over knee or knee over knee. Lift tall. Your uh, right hand, your left hand rather, comes behind your back. Lift up tall through your spine. Your right hand comes to your left knee. Draw the, the, your left hip forward, slightly forward, and then twist to your left. Squeeze your left shoulder blade back and look over your shoulder. Good, full, deep breath. Good, release. Two options here, easier and staying in the chair is that you just bring your feet and knees all the way to a touch and you're just gonna lean forward from your hips. Try not to be rounded, so try to stretch your chest forward. And then only as much as it feels good for you, reach for the ground and let your head hang down. If you prefer to stand up and fold, you can. Good, everyone. Sit back into your chair. Sit all the way back in the chair. Stretch your arms up over your head. Put your hands to the base of your skull. And then think about lifting your skull up. Stretch your whole spine, head, neck up. Lift your chin. And then if your chair allows for you to do it, lean into a back bend and take a good deep heart chest breath there. And then come sit up if your hips slid forward, slide them all the way back. Let your arms relax in your lap. Your hands can be just pressing down on the thighs. I like to cup my hands, this is a, a meditation position called it's a mudra, dhyana mudra, meditation mudra. Um, so your hands cup and then the thumbs just kind of arc up and over, whatever you like. Let your feet rest on the ground. Let your eyes close as long as you're comfortable to do so. Take a couple of good, full, deep belly breaths. As you breathe in, your belly puffs in all directions. And as you breathe out, it relaxes. Think about keeping your hips heavy, but let there be just enough emphasis of keeping the heart and the spine lifting upward, a gentle rise in the crown of your head. Now think of filling your whole torso up with breath, beginning at the base. So you breathe in, you feel a little pressure into the pelvic floor. Your belly expands front, back, sides, expand through your ribs all the way up through the collarbone, shoulders, even into the neck, throat, skull. And then with your exhale, just let it go naturally and easily. Think about breathing into a sense of rhythm where your inhale and exhale are quite symmetrical. Think about breathing from your diaphragm. So that's that muscle that divides your torso in half, right up inside your rib cage. You've got your lower abdominal region and then your chest and upper back region. Really see if you can let your lungs and ribs expand and receive that flow of prana. Prana is life force energy. 
And then as you breathe out, you're clearing all the old used up energy out, making space for the new. Just a couple more breaths like that. Good, everyone. At the end of your next exhale, let your eyes gently open. We're gonna finish our practice here today. This is a really good practice for every single day, um, as long as all the movements and postures feel good. And like I said, you might pick a couple that you really like and practice them a little bit longer each day. And as long as you can keep your breath moving well, that's always gonna be a really positive thing for your, your body, but also your body-mind connection. So keep breathing. Take good care. We'll finish here. Namaste. I want to acknowledge if you're watching this video on YouTube, um, you can check out our studio and all of our offerings. We are still closed during the coronavirus quarantine. So if you'd like to support us, you can make a donation and you can find out how to do that at www.shineyoga.com. Thank you.